Hello students, welcome to Vistas Learning. I am Harshita, your chemistry tutor at Vistas Learning. Vistas Learning is an online education platform where we strive to provide quality education for all. So we know in our class 12 chemistry, we started off with our second chapter that is solution. So in this particular chapter, we have arrived at the last stage, last topic of this particular chapter that is solutions. The topic is colligative properties. So in last class, we had a revision, like we had learned about what exactly is a colligative property, right? So, and what are the different vari like varieties of colligative property, the types of colligative properties. So which are the types of colligative properties which we studied in previous class? Relative lowering of vapor pressure, that's one of the property. And elevation of boiling point, that's the second property. So, what exactly was colligative property and what were the things, okay? How exactly are these properties having an effect on the vapor pressure of the solution? So, that is what we learnt in previous class. So, in today's class, we will be learning about the remaining two colligative properties. That is depression of freezing point as well as osmosis and osmotic pressure. Clear? So, these are the last two properties and uh, in this particular class, we shall see what exactly is happening in depression of freezing point and osmosis and osmotic pressure. Along with that, we'll just solve an exemplar problem as well. Clear? So, depression of freezing point. Now, as we see from the name of the property itself, we can know there is decrease in freezing point. Okay, that, that is what it means by depression of freezing point. So, what is exactly happening here? The freezing point of the pure solvent, okay? If you are taking a pure solvent, the freezing point of the pure solvent is going to be much more higher compared to the freezing point of the solution, okay? So, this will be more and this will be less, clear? So, what exactly it means? The name itself, there is a decrease in the freezing point. So, when we are seeing to, from pure solvent, to the solution, when we take a solvent and add the solute to a solution, there is a decrease, right? That is what is depression of freezing point, okay? Now, if I am taking this as a pure solvent and this as a solution, clear? Here, the solute is added, that's why this is a solution. So, if I am writing it as pure solvent and I will write this as solution. Clear? So now in particularly pure solvent at a particular temperature, okay? So at this particular temperature, the particular freezing point, okay? Freezing point of the pure solvent is going to be at this particular temperature where the liquid phase, okay? The liquid phase of this particular pure solvent is going to be changing to solid phase. That is what is freezing point. We shall see that ahead. And what happens in solution? In this solution, the liquid phase, okay, the liquid phase of the solution is going to be equal, I mean the temperature, the vapor pressure of both of these liquid phase as well as vapor phase is going to be equal. So, in solution, the liquid phase of the solution is going to be equal to the solid phase of the particular substance, okay, that solution. So, at this particular temperature, we can see that is the freezing point of the solution. So, this is the freezing point of the solvent and the freezing point of the solution is this. Clear? That is what is happening in depression of freezing point. How is it happening? Here you can see the freezing point line, okay? The freezing point temperature is more, whereas on further decrease of the temperature, here you can see there is decrease in the temperature for the solution. Clear? So, before we understand what exactly is happening in both these cases, we shall understand what is freezing point first. So, what exactly is freezing point? Freezing point is nothing but the temperature at which the vapor pressure of the substance, okay, vapor pressure of any substance for that matter, in its liquid phase, right, in its liquid phase is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of the particular substance in the solid phase. It's going to be equal to the vapor pressure of the particular substance in the solid phase. That is what is freezing point, where vapor pressure of the solution is going to be equal to the vapor pressure 
of that solution in liquid phase and solid phase. So this is again a pure solvent. So imagine I'm taking it as water. Okay. So this will be water. The water is having particular temperature. Now I'm going to start cooling it. Okay. As I'm cooling it, this is going to form into ice. This is liquid. And this is going to be solid. Clear? As I'm cooling the temperature more and more at a particular temperature, you can see it's going to turn into ice, right? So when will this happen? When this temperature reduces and becomes a particular temperature, when the liquid phase is going to turn into solid. Clear? So when will this happen? This will take place when the vapor pressure of the liquid phase is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of the solid phase of the same substance. Here it is water only. Water in its liquid phase. Water in its solid phase. So what is freezing point? The temperature. This is the, this particular thing is freezing point. Okay. This is the particular temperature at which the vapor pressure of the liquid phase of the particular substance is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of that substance in solid phase. Right. So we understood what exactly is happening in depression and freezing point. We just had a gist of it and then we understood what is freezing point. Now we shall see ahead what exactly is happening inside pure solvent and solution. Okay. So I'm taking a pure solvent. Okay. Pure solvent as I'm cooling it. Okay. I want the uh, freezing point of pure solvent and I'm cooling it. So as I'm cooling at a particular temperature, okay, at this particular temperature, the liquid phase of this solvent is going to turn into solid. Clear? This is the freezing point. When will it, the, when will the temperature change and when will it become, this is a particular temperature, right? So from this temperature, it changes to the solid phase's temperature. When will the liquid phase become to solid phase? When the vapor pressure of the pure solvent in the liquid phase is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of the pure solvent in solid phase. Can you see that? It is equal. It's going to be equal. So this is what is happening in pure solvent. Now I'll take the same pure solvent. To this, I will add solute particles, okay? So I'll add solute particles, I'll dissolve it. So as soon as the solute particles are added into the liquid solvent, what is happening to the vapor pressure? Vapor pressure is reducing. We had already learned this, right? When the solute is added to the solvent, when the solution is formed, the vapor pressure decreases. We learned this in previous properties. So when the vapor pressure is actually decreased, this particular vapor pressure will be the vapor pressure of the solution in liquid phase. That's what I've written here. So I'll start cooling it further, okay? From this particular temperature, it is not going to turn into ice here. So I'm cooling it further and further at a particular temperature. So at this particular temperature, you can see the liquid phase of the solution is going to turn into the solid phase of the particular solution. Clear, this is the temperature. This is the freezing point of the solution. So here you can see the temperature is reduced from here to here. When will this temperature reduction take place and when will it form into the solid when the vapor pressure of the liquid phase is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of the solid phase. So when the vapor pressure reduced, we have to bring the entire solution to such a vapor pressure. When it turns into solid, it's going to be equal. You can see it is going to be equal. So at this particular vapor pressure, we can see the liquid phase of the solution is going to turn into solid phase. So as I was telling, you can see here, there is depression in freezing point happening. There is decrease in the temperature from this temperature to this temperature. Obviously, there is a decrease. That is the reason we are calling this entire thing as depression of freezing point because there is a decrease of the temperature. If, uh, if I'm taking water for that matter, water is going to be having around 0 degree Celsius. Okay. And when I'm uh, adding some solute, the freezing point of water is going to be 0 degree Celsius. Now, if I'm taking this, this is particularly water. Okay. 
so the freeze this is going to turn into ice okay liquid phase of this is going to turn into solid at this particular temperature is going to be around 0 degree celsius okay imagine i'm taking it 0 degree celsius now when i'm adding solute and i'm dissolving it the vapor pressure reduced now the temperature is also reduced when when the liquid turns into solid the temperature is further reduced can you see this this is the particular temperature at which the liquid turns into solid and imagine this temperature is going to be around minus 4 degree celsius so there is much more reduction of the temperature that is the reason we are telling here there is a depression of freezing point so from 0 degree celsius to minus 4 degree celsius there is a depression there is a decrease hence the name depression of freezing point clear students i hope this is particular topic is understood clearly now we'll see how can we okay there's one more thing that we have to uh, make a note here we have already seen the temperature and vapor pressure are related to each other they are directly proportional so as i'm decreasing the temperature more the vapor pressure also is decreased this is vice versa if the vapor pressure i i told you all right here in this particular thing the vapor pressure had to be equal it was quite high but when we came to solution the vapor pressure gradually decreased correct so when vapor pressure decreased what will happen to the temperature we need to make sure the vapor pressure of liquid phase is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of solid phase right so when it is decreased furthermore what should we see we have to see that temperature also will decrease as vapor pressure decreases temperature also decreases furthermore that is why there is a decrease in the temperature depression of freezing point so now we will see this entire thing a graphical representation of whatever we learnt okay this will give you an idea of how exactly we can represent the particular depression of freezing point graphically so first okay see i am going to tell you all how you have to follow this forget about whatever is there on the board first i am going to take the coordinates okay so i'll have temperature as well as vapor pressure x coordinate and the y coordinate clear now i am going to take the liquid solvent liquid solvent will be present here okay so this particular liquid solvent i want the freezing point of it so i'm going to start cooling it as i'm cooling it further the vapor pressure is actually decreasing from here you can see the vapor pressure is actually decreasing it comes to this particular point so this point is when the liquid phase okay of the particular liquid solvent is going to turn into frozen solvent as in it's going to become solid at this particular temperature and that temperature is going to be delta naught f okay delta naught f what is delta naught f what is this particular temperature this is our freezing point of pure solvent since it is not not represents pure right that is going to be the freezing point of the pure solvent this thing okay this is for liquid solvent at this particular temperature it's going to turn into the solid fine now if i'm taking solution okay so when i'm taking solution what happens here i told you as soon as the solute is added into the solvent the vapor pressure is actually decreased right that is why you can see a decrease here okay this is the solution i'm taking in the starting there is a decrease in vapor pressure now i'm going to start cooling it till a point where the liquid phase of the solution is going to turn into solid when will it happen when the vapor pressure see the vapor pressure of liquid is going to be equal to the vapor pressure of the solid phase of the particular solution that is when it's going to start freezing right so the temperature is furthermore decreased and this particular temperature at which the liquid phase is going to turn into a solid phase is our freezing point right so tf is going to be our freezing point of the solution so delta naught tf is the freezing point of the pure solvent and tf is going to be the freezing point of the solution you can see there is actually a decrease right there is actually a decrease in the particular temperature that is why we are calling that is that as 
depression and freezing point. So we can represent the difference in the temperatures between the freezing point of the pure solvent as well as the freezing point of the solution. That difference in the temperature is going to be our delta Tf. So a delta Tf is nothing but depression of freezing point. Clear students? So I hope this particular graphical representation has made you understand what exactly is happening in depression of freezing point. It was a similar kind of representation but there is a little modification over here. There is a little, little bit change in the graphical representation of the freezing point and the boiling point. There is only a little difference but it goes in a similar manner. Okay. Now we shall see how exactly we can write this depression of freezing point mathematically. So as we know initially, right? Initially, there was only pure solvent. So, what was the freezing point of the pure solvent? It was T naught F. Correct. Now, later, we took solution. What was the temperature of the solution? I mean, the freezing point of the solution. We represented it as T F only. Now, the depression, the difference between the temperatures, freezing points, that is nothing but that was our depression of freezing point. So, we can write this particular thing as which had higher freezing point, R T naught F pure solvent, right, minus this. Clear? This is what we understood. Now, this is written experimentally, depression of freezing point is written experimentally like it's directly proportional to molarity, molality, correct? It's directly proportional to molality. Now, since we know the proportionality, we can change into equal uh, equality symbol, right? So, when we change the proportionality symbol, we know it's going to be delta Tf depression of freezing point is going to be equal to Kf into M. M is a molality, molar concentration. What exactly is Kf? Kf here is cryoscopic constant. So, this is cryoscopic constant. Okay, this has uh, two, three names, cryoscopic constant, freezing point, uh, depression of freezing point constant. Uh, all of these are the names given for Kf, okay. So, you need to know all of these names because when you are solving question uh, like problems basically, so in problems they will just give you the cryoscopic constant is this. So, you need to understand what exactly is cryoscopic constant. So, you need to know all the names of Kf, okay. Cryoscopic constant is Kf. The unit of Kf here is Kelvin kg per mole okay it's going to be kelvin kg per mole so we know molality can be written as we already know this right what exactly is molality number of moles of the solute by mass of the solvent mass of the solution in kg okay mass of the so solution in kg so number of moles of solute what exactly is number of moles of solute we know that it is given mass by molar mass and what exactly is mass of the solvent and mass of the solution in kg we know the mass of the solvent basically is going to be nothing but uh, m2 right like w sorry it's going to be w1 now w1 divided by 1000 why am i taking 1000 imagining that like assuming all the other quantities are going to be given all the other weights is going to be given in grams okay Here, this can also be written as W2 into 1000 by W1 into M2. Now, I am just going to substitute the molarity into this particular equation. Okay. I don't want you all to by heart. We are just solving it with all the data we already know. Correct.
this particular equation is necessary for us when we are solving the problems okay so from this any one of the data will be missing we have to find out that that particular data from the rest of the data whatever is being provided to us that's all so this is important you don't have to buy anything you just have to understand how exactly this arrives so once you know this exactly how it arrives we already know what is molality so you just have to substitute whatever is there for molality and go ahead clear this is how we can represent mathematically the depression of freezing point now uh, we know we said about boiling point as well as uh, freezing point right so what exactly is kf and kb how exactly they are dependent on each other is what i have given here so the values of kf and kb depend on the nature of the solvent which can be ascertained from the following relation so it basically depends on the nature of solvent what depends on the nature of solvent the kf and kb particularly depends on the nature of the solvent so if i'm taking kf of here we know there is molar mass of the component 1 we are taking component 1 here as solvent right most of the cases the component 1 is a solvent only so here also it is depending dependent on the molar mass of component 1 so from this we can understand how exactly kf and kb are related to each other and how exactly they are dependent on the molar mass of the solvent r is our gas constant here also gas constant and tf here is going to be the freezing point of the pure solvent it's going to be the boiling point of pure solvent and when we come to here this particular thing is going to be enthalpy of fusion enthalpy of fusion and here it's going to be enthalpy of vaporization clear so we named what and all other things okay whatever uh, quantities are given over here we named all of them and we understood how exactly kb and kf is going to be dependent on the molar mass they are going to be dependent on the nature of the particular solvent clear now we shall solve a problem based on whatever we learned till now so what is the data that they have given here we'll just read out the problem write down the data and solve it so 1 gram of the non electrolyte solute dissolved in 50 gram of benzene lowered the freezing point of benzene by 0.40 kelvin so freezing point of depression constant of benzene is 5.12 kelvin kg per mole find the molar mass of the solute so they have asked us to find out what first thing molar mass of the solute right this needs to be found out what is the data that they have given first 1 gram of non electrolyte solute so they have given us the solute quantity right and they have given 50 g of benzene it is dissolved in 50 g of benzene that is going to be the quantity of our solvent correct which is actually lowered the freezing point by 0.40 kelvin so our depression of freezing point is going to be 0.40 kelvin clear so uh, what is our uh, depression constant so we know that freezing point depression constant that is kf is nothing but 5.12 kelvin kg per mole this is exactly the data that we have with us okay so now we need to find out m2 first thing we need to understand whatever the data is given how can we relate it to each other now if i'm taking depression and freezing point we know that it is equal to cryoscopic constant into molality correct so we know the values of both of these we can find out molality right so we know it can be written as correct we can write it this way now what is delta tf delta tf was 0.40 and what was kf kf was 5.12 kelvin kelvin kg per mole correct kelvin kelvin cancels and what will be this particular answer i want you all to calculate along with me so you all also will have a revision of how exactly we can solve it so 0.40 
divided by 5.12. It's going to be 0 0.078. 0 0.078. Kg per mole. Clear? That's going to be our molality. We know that our molality is nothing but W2 into 1000 by W1 into M2. From this, we can just cross multiply and get the M2 formula, which can be written as M2 is going to be equal to W2 into 1000. W2 into 1000, okay, W1 into M, right, because we know the data for W2, W1 as well as molality, now we will solve for that, so our M2 is going to be equal to, what was W2, W2 was 1 gram into 1000 gram per kg, right, and what was the other thing? It's W1 into M. W1 was 50 gram into 0 0.078. 0 0.078 kg per mole. Correct? Gram and gram goes. We know that it grows. That's what it is here. Now we just have to calculate this and we'll get our M2 value. So, can you all calculate what exactly is the M2 value? It's going to be 1000 by 50 into 0 0.078. It's going to be 3.9. So, 1000 divided by 3.9 is going to give us 256. 256, what exactly comes here? Gram per mole. This particular is the entire molar mass of the solute. Clear students? It's not difficult at all. We just have to understand what exactly was the relation between delta Tf, molality as well as Kf. If you know the particular relation, you can easily solve it and go ahead. Clear? Now we'll go for the next property. We finish the depression of freezing point. Now the next property and the last property among the colligative property is osmotic pressure. Okay, so before we understand what exactly is osmotic pressure, we need to understand what is osmosis. So what exactly is osmosis? Osmosis is nothing but the movement of the solvent particles, okay, movement of the solvent molecules from a region of higher concentration to a region of lower concentration, fine. Higher concentration of what? Higher concentration of solvent molecules. The region where there is high concentration of solvent molecules from that particular region it will move towards the region where there is less concentration of solvent molecules. Remember here I am talking about solvent molecules movement. That is the osmosis. Through what will it move? Through semi-permeable membrane. This is a very important point. It passes and it moves only through the semi-permeable membrane. What exactly is the semi-permeable membrane? Semi is half. Okay. Permeable means uh, slightly, okay, half of the things which can pass through some membrane. So these membranes are like a, similar to what do we tell, like a sieve, okay. So you know in the sieve only smaller particles we can pass through the sieve, right. The larger particles will not pass through. So if the sieve is like this, right, it will have small holes in it, right. Now if I am putting smaller particles, Smaller particles will pass through it. If I am putting big particles, what will happen? The big particles will be staying on the sieve itself. It will not pass, right? So it will be on the other side of the sieve. It will not pass and come to the uh, other side. It is going to be on one of the sides. So this semi-permeable membrane acts like this, where it allows only the smaller particles to pass through it, slightly uh, small particles, and it's not going to allow the bigger particles to solve through it. That is what is semi-permeable membrane. So in this particular thing, you can understand here, here we are taking pure solvent, okay. So if I am taking a pure solvent here, pure solvent, high concentration, here low concentration, 
okay so here the pure solvent is in higher concentration here it is in lower concentration this in between whatever it is there this is going to act as semi permeable membrane okay so here the movement of the particles will take place okay into the other side from the region of higher concentration the movement of the particles will take place particles as in solvent molecules to the region of lower concentration so once the movement has taken place this is how you can see here here the solvent particles have become very less concentration here the solvent molecules have become of high concentration that is what is happening in osmosis okay movement of the solvent molecules from the region of high concentration to the region of low concentration through what through semi permeable membrane now which is the molecules which is have higher concentration like which is of uh, less uh, very small which is of smaller size are solvent molecules which are the particles which is of bigger size are solute particles so here the movement will take place of what it's going to take place only of the solvent molecules because solvent molecules are smaller in size this particular phenomenon is known as osmosis now we know the osmosis is seen in many cases correct so in our day to day life also we see osmosis example of here is mango shrivel when pickled in brine so we know how exactly the mango shrivel when it is pickled in brine and one more example is wilted flowers revive when they placed in fresh water if you are taking a wilted flower the flower which is being completely dry okay they have completely like a uh, wilted we just take some flower a bouquet and come for 2 3 days we are going to keep it at home it's just going to fade off right if the leaves are not going to be straight it's going to start bending down so when we take such kind of flowers and keep it into a bowl of water what exa what exactly happens when we place it inside the water here we know there is high concentration of solvent molecules we'll take the solvent molecules here as water it is going to be going to the region through the stem okay it's going to start going to the region yeah stem is going to be semi permeable membrane to the region where there is less concentration so this flower had less concentration when it was wilted okay so the movement of water from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration this entire phenomenon is known as osmosis clear this is one of the example where we can see in a day to day life now if i want to stop osmosis or when will exactly this osmosis stop okay so how long will the movement keep taking place this osmosis will stop when the concentration of the solvent molecules is going to be equal on both the sides okay here also the solvent molecule concentration concentration is going to be equal to the solvent molecule concentration in the less concentrated place till then the movement will take place when an equilibrium is reached when both the sides will have equal amount of solvent molecules that is when the osmosis is going to stop clear now we shall understand osmotic pressure so we understood what exactly is osmosis and when osmosis is going to stop and a few examples of osmosis as well so now what is osmotic pressure because our colligative property the fourth colligative property is osmotic pressure only right so osmotic pressure is nothing but the pressure that is being applied osmosis movement of solvent particles from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration through semi permeable membrane is a osmosis right so this entire thing is going to be osmosis now okay osmosis versus diffusion this is so usually people are going to get confused what exactly is osmosis and what exactly is diffusion because both of them looks very similar uh, osmosis also looks similar and diffusion also looks similar there is a tendency for the students to get confused so here we are just telling what exactly is osmosis and how can we differentiate it from the uh, diffusion so if i'm seeing here we know what is osmosis right the movement of the solvent molecules this is a solvent from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration 
to semi permeable membrane this is what is osmosis now if i go to diffusion okay diffusion is nothing but movement of the particles from the region of higher concentration to the region of lower concentration it is movement of particles not solvent only that is the first difference here both the components the solute as well as the solvent both of them will move from the region wherever the solvent particles is high in concentration from there the solvent particles move will move to the lower concentration now if i'm taking uh, this okay here it is high concentration of solvent here it is low concentration of solvent okay so that's how this movement is taking place from left to right okay now once the movement of solvent particles is happening from higher concentration to lower concentration what exactly will be here here it will be high concentration of solute here it is high concentration of what of solute here it will be low concentration of the solute so the solute will move this is solute okay so the solute will start moving in the other direction from uh, right to left so this is what you need to understand here the movement of the particles are going to take place both the ways okay so we can tell here since there is no semi permeable membrane here there will be no semi permeable membrane that's the second difference you can see the movement of particles from higher concentration to lower concentration if solvent is of higher concentration in left side it's the, it's going to start moving towards the right side okay if solute is going to be of higher concentration in the right side it's going to be moving towards the left side so the net diffusion if you are talking about the net diffusion we can tell the net diffusion is from left to right or you can tell the net diffusion is from right to left clear when we see the movement happening which is happening more that's how we can tell the net diffusion this particular thing is diffusion where the movement of particles are going to be of both the sides there is no semi permeable membrane as well and here the movement will take place only of the particles entirely in osmosis it was only about the solvent clear students now we arrive at osmotic pressure so what exactly is osmotic pressure the pressure that just stops the flow of the solvent is called as osmotic pressure so osmotic pressure basically is nothing but that is going to stop the flow of the solvent molecules i just want to stop the flow of the solvent molecules from higher concentration to lower concentration that particular pressure is known as our osmotic pressure now if i am going to be taking over here i am taking a pure solvent over here so our pure solvent in the left okay in the same container in the left we have pure solvent in the right we have a solution this is going to be solution clear pure solvent and solution so uh, which molecules will move first thing that you have to see i told you molecules will move from higher concentration to lower concentration right which molecules will move the molecules which are in present in high concentration which are the molecules which are present in high concentration are solvent molecules where is the solvent molecules present in higher concentration in pure solvent or in solution in pure solvent right so the movement of particles will take place from the pure solvent to the solution side through what through semi permeable membrane clear what exactly is the semi permeable membrane i told you the semi permeable membrane allows only smaller particles to pass through it so through the semi permeable membrane the semi permeable membrane we can see there is movement of the solvent molecules from pure solvent to the solution after the movement take place it looks something like this right so now we know here right in the solution as i have mentioned over here i am going to start putting some pressure okay a uh, extra pressure is applied on the solution so this pressure whatever is applied on the solution is going to make sure that the movement of the solvent molecules just stops okay this extra pressure whatever we are applying to make sure the movement of solvent molecules is stops is known as our osmotic pressure okay this entire phenom phenomenon was osmosis the pressure that we are applying is known as our osmotic pressure clear so you understood what exactly is osmotic pressure now we shall see 
mathematically how can we represent osmotic pressure clear so we know osmotic pressure actually can be represented as pi okay is a capital pi so this pi experimentally it's going to be directly proportional to molarity okay here molarity is going to be written as c okay not as your capital m here it is written as c so our osmotic pressure is going to be directly proportional to c that is a molarity we can change the proportionality symbol this way this is a very important equation clear where this entire thing what is this osmotic pressure is going to be equal to c into r into t okay c is a molarity so we know and what is r and t r is our gas constant right and t is a temperature right t is a temperature and c is what c is our molarity we can write molarity as we know what is molarity number of moles of the solute per unit volume of the solution okay number of moles of the solute per unit volume of the solution so we can write c is going to be number of moles of solute right so only it is n2 per unit volume of the solution clear so when we are substituting this particular equation in this what will we get we can write it as r into t correct now i am just going to cross multiply just rearrange this equation this way clear now we know what is n2 n2 is nothing but it's going to be the number of the, the component okay the amount of the component 2 that is a solute by given mass by the molar mass correct now we can find out from here m2 if we rearrange the equations m2 can be written as this particular formula is very important for solving problems okay you just don't have to same thing as i'm telling you you don't have to by heart this entire derivation you just have to know this particular equation from this i know definitely you can arrive at this while we are solving right because i don't want you all to just by heart this equation get confused with all the other properties uh, equation whatever we learned if you know basically how are they related to each other if it is a if the osmotic pressure is related to molarity or molality here you have to remember it is dependent as in it's going to be directly proportional to the molarity so we know molarity we studied it way before by in first one or two classes only right how can we express the concentration of solution so we know the formula for it as well and we can come easily to this particular equation we can arrive at this equation easily so this is how we can represent osmotic pressure mathematically now this osmotic pressure method okay it's actually way helpful and it is way advantageous compared to the other methods of uh, whatever this colligative property can be represented okay so the osmotic pressure method has an advantage over other method methods how does it have an advantage over other methods because here the molarity of the solution is used instead of molality we have to remember your rest of the cases we used what we used molality right but here we are using molarity we know that molarity and molality are dependent like they are related to each other right so when they are related to each other we can know we studied that also where did we study molarity and molality uh, like you know they dependent on each other the equation we studied it in expressing concentration of solution so in that particular thing in our first one or two classes we studied about it i'm not going to go deep into it because if you have to recall about it we can just go into that particular video and see okay so molarity of the solution is used from this we can understand how exactly it is dependent on the molarity on the concentration of the solution our osmotic pressure is going to be dependent on the concentration of the solution clear the other uh, advantages what we have uh, advantage whatever we have of using osmotic pressure was 
pressure measurement is around the room temperature. The pressure measurement entirely is around the room temperature. Clear? So here we don't have to apply any pressure or anything of that sort. Here it entirely takes place under room temperature. So this is also one more advantage. Clear students? So now exactly we understood what was osmotic pressure, what was the depression of freezing point. In the previous class, we understood relative lowering of vapor pressure as well as elevation of boiling point. These were the four colligative properties which plays a very important role in this particular chapter. Because usually from this chapter, if we are seeing around six to seven marks uh, is going to come. So among those, this is something which is very important, which is going to come as a problem for you. Okay, it's going to arrive when the question paper in the form of problems where you just have to substitute the formula like you know, come give the formula and substitute the data whatever they have given and find out the data whatever they have asked for so that is one of the important things and we have to understand this colligative properties it's very easy so basically this entire chapter was very easy we just have to understand how exactly the vapor pressure basically is relating and what exactly is happening with our solubility and how can we express the concentration of solutions? These were the three things which played major role, okay? Which were the main topics of this entire solutions chapter, okay? So in the next class, we shall be dealing with what exactly is the reverse osmosis. We studied in this class, what is osmosis? In next class, we shall be studying what is reverse osmosis. And along with that, we shall be studying abnormal molar mass. So after the next session, we just have a question and answer session the NCRT question and answers, the question answers which are a little tricky, tricky and which would have appeared in your uh, exams as well. So all those question and answers we shall be solving in the, uh, like the later classes whichever is going to come. So if you have enjoyed my session today, you can like the video, okay, and you can share it as well as subscribe to our channel where you can get access to entire all the chapter videos. So till now we have almost completed, a, we completed our first chapter, right? You all were there with me throughout the first chapter now we are doing the second chapter that is the solutions which we've almost come to the end of it so uh, in order to make sure that you get access to all the videos whatever it is there you can even uh, log into our particular website which is www.v-learning.in so in this particular website we can get access to all the videos just not class 11 and 12 there might be someone who is interested in class 10 or nine, any of these videos who are studying in that particular class, uh, classes, you all can get all of these videos as well. So I shall meet you in the next class. Until then, keep recalling whatever we have studied till now. If you have any doubts in any of the particular video, you can always go back and watch it. Or you can always ask me in the YouTube uh, comments and then I can answer you all, right? So I shall meet you in the next class. Until then, stay tuned to Vistas Learning.